I celebrated losing 10 pounds and going from 300 to 290 pounds by going to Venice. In Venice, I traveled to Murano and Burano. Murano is famous throughout the world for its amazing glass. And Burano is famous for its lace making, which is all done by hand by skilled artisans. In Venice, I did so many exciting things that I wanted to be able to do. I went to the Rialto Bridge. I ate cicchetti. I tried the black ink squid pasta. I went to St. Mark's Basilica, the Doge's Palace. I had high tea at Cafe Florian, and I even rode on a gondola. Going to Venice was the experience of a lifetime, and I've never been anywhere like that city. A lot of times when you go to a new city, you can say, oh, it's a lot like New York, it's a lot like San Francisco, but Venice is unlike anywhere I've ever been. There are a couple of things that I learned while in Venice that I thought were kind of noteworthy. The first one is about pickpockets. Pickpockets are so good at what they do. It's unbelievable how good they are at what they do. They are better at what they do than you are at guarding your valuables. My second tip is to be able to get the city pass tickets available on the Doge's Palace website. It gives you access to the Doge's Palace in a special museum pass line that allows you the opportunity to bypass all of the other lines. The other lines were about two hours long whenever we were there, so I was really happy we could automatically go in with the city pass. It also gave us access to the Murano Glass Museum as well as the Burano Lace Museum and many other attractions. The third thing that I think is definitely worth knowing is how big the Doge's Palace really is. It opens up in a courtyard, then goes in through the Doge's Palace, through the Doge's Apartments. There's a lot to be able to see. And then you get into the actual Doge's Palace, which is room that is bigger in scale and size and complexity than most that I've ever seen in my life. And it opens from one room that's a great room like that into another great room and then another one and then one that's like four times the size and then another smaller one, but still massive and huge into another giant hall. And it's almost overwhelming in how much there is to see inside of the Doge's Palace. I didn't understand that the Doge's Palace then opens up into the armory, then into the Bridge of Size, which you're actually going across on the inside. Then the entire prison system, which is connected to the Doge's Palace. At about three hours in, I noticed that my legs were getting really tired and my neck was getting really sore from doing this. Wow. Wow. And it was absolutely that incredible. The fourth thing that I learned is that there's something extra special to see inside of St. Mark's Basilica. St. Mark's Basilica has all these giant golden glittering mosaics. It also has some of the most beautiful horses that you'll ever see. These horses are four bronze horses that were originally made for Alexander the Great and then brought to Venice and later brought to Paris by Napoleon when he himself took them. Now they're back at St. Mark's Basilica for you to see, but to be able to see them, you have to go up the staircase. There's this tiny, narrow, super steep staircase that you have to go up. I was really happy that I did so many squats and prepared for the leg strength to be able to do such serious stair climbing whenever I was in Italy. When you're up there, you also get the opportunity to go outside on the roof of St. Mark's Basilica. From the roof, you get these incredible views of the Campanile, of St. Mark's Square, of all of the different things that you wanna see. And if you're out there, whenever the bells chime, it's magical. The roof is angled and the tiles are uneven, so it might present some mobility challenges. I felt like it took a little bit of a leap of faith for me to learn the fifth thing, which is that the gondoliers are actually really good at being able to keep the boat afloat. I had a bit of a fear that whenever I got into the boat that it was going to flip over or that I would somehow end up wet and embarrassed and cold. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity and I took it and I'm so happy that I did. The sixth and final thing to know is that there are no cars inside of Venice. So what that means is that when you get to Venice, you're relying on public transit to get you to your hotel. If you've packed really heavily, that also means that you're carrying quite a lot of luggage with you. However light you can travel, the better. We stayed in a hotel that was really close to the major public transit areas. It was called the Hotel Papadopoli, and it was beautiful. It was really close to the Vaporetto main line. It was super close to the train station. The hotel itself was absolutely beautiful. The heat and water pressure were both very good and the service was exemplary. The hotel breakfast was this giant, beautiful buffet spread that everybody in my family absolutely loved because it was both beautiful and delicious. It also had a really relaxing and beautiful bar area. So overall, I had a really good experience at the Hotel Papadopoli. Plus it's just fun to say, Hotel Papadopoli.
And those were the major things that I learned on my trip to Venice. Next time, I'm going to go somewhere else. See you then.